Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm very happy to have back John Dayton, and we're going to cover some of your questions, and who knows where we're going to go with this conversation. Please welcome John Dayton. So, so I'll tell you again, I got a little bit of a sore throat, and there was a knock on the door, and the Baldwin sisters brought me some of this. They call it their recipe. Oh, really? No. Oh. So we we better cover the important stuff <laughs> fast, huh? <laughs> While <you're... laughs> yes, you'll notice as we proceed, I'll be getting redder and redder, <laughs> <laughs> and the answers might get more and more interesting. <laughs> more interesting, yes. Uh, <laughs> we might find out what you really thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, here I am. Here you are. You look great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. As Miss Hepburn taught me, I got I'm still listening to her. Always she liked me in blue or in you know turquoise. She said that wear that. So I will wear that today. How are you? Good choice. I, I am well. It's kind of a gloomy day here where I am. So well, it has been a oh. while since we've had a chance to um yeah connect and and talk about some stuff and and I think it's been I mean we did all those wonderful segments during the strike where we covered you know things besides the Walton so you know we have an opportunity here to come back to not that it has to be strictly the Waltons but um you know cover some things that uh that we couldn't then um well, why not the Waltons of course yeah well I I did I did earmark a couple of questions that I've been sometimes, you know, like I'll set things aside because I don't know the answers. And so yeah. you may not either, but if you, some of them, I'm sure you do. In fact, I asked you about this one, but I never relayed the information. So I figured I'd let it come from you, which was someone asked what happens to Oscars after an actor passes away that they seem to remember that they cannot be passed on to family must be returned to the Academy. Is that false or true? Um, <clears throat> yes, it's also true. It, <laughs> it's both. Actually, it, it belongs to the Academy, the Oscar does. Um, but as I understand, the last time I checked for a dollar, you can buy, if you're a family, you know, you can purchase the Oscar for $1. And then it becomes yours. Now, I hope I'm not wrong about that, but uh, everybody at home can Google it, but I'm 99% sure. And uh, what about the recipient? Do they they just have it as... They then can give it, like with Kate's Oscars, her four, uh, the family uh, gave them to the Smithsonian. I think it's the Smithsonian, yeah, or the National Gallery. Um, but they were free to present them to uh, the museum, and uh, they become the museum's property. Okay, so had the family, in your to your understanding, kind of paid the one dollar per statue? Yeah. To, yeah. So does the family do it, or would um, would Kate have had to do it? No, the family. Okay. The surviving, the surviving family. Yeah. Okay. So the actual recipient never has to purchase it to, to keep it. No. So if they want no. to pass it on. Yes. Uh, as far as I understand, if you have gotten an Oscar and you die, that your whoever I guess is in your will, your family, uh, receives the Oscar and they can dispose of it for a dollar. Mm. So all these stories you hear about people finding them at auctions or at a flea market, you know, those, if they're real, they shouldn't be there at that flea market. Uh, someone, someone did something naughty <laughs> with the well, Oscar. It would be interesting whether family members would know that, you know, if 
like if you had a relative who had it, would they would they know that it belonged to the academy? I, Does the academy send a message to family members? I mean, how would somebody know that? You know, well, I, I think they would know because um, number one, they're probably a very famous actor, and for example, in Kate's family. Um, you know, they're all, all used to having an actress around the house, you know. Yeah. Um, and and also her her niece who starred with her in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner was well acquainted, and she's a wonderful actress, was Kathy, she's well acquainted with, you know, what those kinds of things. Yeah. So, but then you think of all the other people in other categories who win Oscars who aren't actors. So there's yeah, and, there's all and, of that and too. Honestly, yeah, I don't know what to do with mine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, back up. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna have a little bit more of the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did get nominated for an Emmy once. Awesome. Which was due to Kate. Nice of her. That's sweet. Anyway, so that answers that question, I hope. Yeah. Um, well, that actually leads me right into the next question, which someone asked, which was, how does the nomination process work? Does the actor send clips to the nomination committee themselves? Does an agent on the shows uh, or the show's producers or the network decide on clips? Like, So how does that whole nomination happen for Emmys or Oscars or whatever? Yeah. Um, now, I don't know exactly with the Oscar, but I would think it would be similar to the Emmy. And here's a confession. <laughs> One of our TV movies uh, that I did with Kate, I there's paperwork that the producers have to send in to the TV Academy, and they have to be sent in in time in order for a nomination to be made. And uh, I missed on one of our movies. I, I didn't get the paperwork there in time. And so Kate didn't get nominated. Mm. <laughs> but, to, you know, Miss Hepburn didn't. Oh, Miss Hepburn. I just called her Miss Hepburn. <laughs> <laughs> she, wasn't, she wasn't much for awards at all. She mm. she did not like that. Neither did Spencer Tracy, um, her friend. It They both felt like it was... Um, you Everyone has talent. And what are we doing? We're racing to the finish line to find out who's the best. Mm. And they didn't, neither one of them liked that. Um, I did ask Kate why she didn't ever go to the award ceremonies, and she was very honest. She said, I was afraid I would lose. Hmm. But I don't, I don't think that was 100% of the, of the reason. I think she just, once she got them, she was very proud of them, and uh, very honored, but um, not necessarily uh, possessive of it. Or well, I mean, I I started hearing. I, I knew nothing, of course. You know, the one time I went to the Emmys was, I think, nineteen seventy three, when the Waltons was nominated and won um, best drama series. Uh, you know, for our first season and. You know, it was like, oh, yay. And we got we all got invited. It was the only time that the whole whole cast was invited. Um, and mm -hmm. I actually have a certificate from the Academy, from the um, Television Academy, uh, because the show won. Um, mm -hmm. So basically honoring all of the cast. Um, it was like an acknowledgement of the show having won. So it's the closest I have come to winning an Emmy was, you know, being part of I think the show one. I, I think you should tack it up on the wall there mm. so we can all see it. <laughs> now, but, but I then started uh, hearing um, other people say, make comments about how much sort of campaigning will go on um, for, I mean, certainly, you know, films have a whole, 
I mean, shows that, you know, they have a whole publicity budget and stuff. And, but, you know, I, I do remember in some seasons, then my agent wanting me to like place a full page ad in the Hollywood reporter and the variety, you know, for consideration for, you know, a nomination and, um, uh, a couple of friends talked about who who did get nominations at some point on projects and talking, just making some reference to it being a lot of campaigning. And I was like, OK, who do you, you know what mean? that is? <laughs> you know what that is, Judy? That's just that's promoting yourself. Uh -huh. I mean, quite honestly, uh -huh. uh, you know, take a full page out in variety or whatever. There you are. You're promoting yourself, whether you win or you don't win. Yeah. I don't think any of that promotion stuff works because you, either you're brilliant or you're not, you know, if you're brilliant, yeah. you're the, nobody's going to look at an ad and go, okay, I need to vote for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Know? Well, sometimes it's familiar. It is familiarity. Um, and certainly like a lot of things there, there can be a degree of popularity, you know, popularity mm -hmm. contest, you know, which is how I, I can see why yeah. some actors feel like, okay, some actor is better liked than another. So if their peers are voting on, on it, you know, because it is, it is apples and oranges. Every performance that gets nominated is worthy. And a lot of performances that didn't get nominated are worthy. So worthy. Right. It's, it's tough. Right. Yeah. Uh, I remember, um, I don't know if we still have a People's Choice Award. I don't know. I don't, you remember I don't know that? that we do. I remember that. Yeah. I remember we, we won people's choice awards as well. Yeah. And uh, when I was working with Bert Reynolds, uh, Bert received that mm. and uh, it had a prominent place in the office. It was glass, very beautiful, but that's a different story. Yeah. That's a popularity thing. Yeah. You know, from the audience, not necessarily from, not from your peers, but, you know, right. an audience vote. From so, yeah, interesting stuff. I mean, but clearly that's an important part of success is if the people like you and, you know, it's that's how films. That reminds me, Beulah Bondi got nominated for the pony cart. She won for the pony cart. And here's what happened. I got a call from Ralph. Sanensky, who had directed it, and he was to take her to it. Mm. And something happened and he wasn't able to. So he called me and he said, could you take her? I had to work. And I don't remember who take who took her. And yes, mm. she won the Emmy. Yeah. Yeah, that was a thrill. All right. Next question. Okay. Was, You're going to ask me where the, the name Oscar came from, right? No. no. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> Probably the guy who created the statue. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Blair. So how want, wanted to know how, how budgeting on a show works. Do the producers line up advertisers? This is the question. I know some of it, but I don't know all of it. Do the producers line up advertisers? How much will they pay for advertising per show? What happens if a show goes over budget? Does a show ever go under budget? So just the whole thing of like with a TV show, who finances what relative to the network and the producers? And then how the where does the advertising come into play? Um, who decides on the budget? And yeah, how does it get, you know, if you if one show goes over budget, one goes under, you know, how does all that work? Okay, well, that's separate from the advertising because yes. the network sells the advertising and the advertising is worth the amount of viewers mm -hmm. that are anticipated or, for example, with our show that did really well after a few years, the price goes up. And generally at that time, uh, it was per second. So... 60 seconds would be, let's say, $35,000. I know it was a lot more than that, but let's say it was that. So the network, that's where the network gets their money. Now, the network provides, at that time, provided us with a, um, 
a fee, let's say, um, to produce the show each week. Let's let's say the show costs us. Um, I don't even remember, but it was low. <laughs> Something like let's say three or four hundred thousand for for the week. Yeah, that's that's budgeted. Right to me. Yeah, and that's budgeted, mm -hmm. and um, so uh, to simply put it, yeah, they would hand us a check. It's not the way it happened, but they hand us a check for three fifty, and we need to do it for three fifty. If we do it for less, then we made some money. If it costs more, then that money comes out of our pocket, and then it gets really complicated when it comes to future usage of, of the material, you know. Um, I believe that, uh, I, I believe that when CBS paid us, that was for two runs, I think. Uh, something is telling me that's, that's right. Um, but it, 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 in general, that's, it's pretty easy stuff. And then the budgeting, um, you know, comes is on our show, uh, Lee, Rich, and Neil Mafio, um, they were the ones who said, okay, Judy gets paid $5, and Eric gets paid five dollars mm -hmm. <laughs> and maybe that's more than you made I, I <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty but darn they, close <laughs> but, but they determined that and and yeah. uh, interestingly and i hope this happens i was on the phone with uh, ralph soninski on and we were talking about the gift remember the gift was ron yeah, Ron Howard, yeah. He said uh, we were talking about number of days that we had because number of days is part of the budget. You know, more days, more cost. He, Ralph, when Ralph read the script, he asked for permission to go to Franklin Canyon. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember that scene where Ron, that brilliant, scene where he is just screaming he's running through the trees and and screaming that was that um and I, and I asked Ralph I said was that Franklin Canyon I don't remember it looks like Franklin Canyon yes it was and yes he did have to ask for permission for the company to make that move to do that shooting over there so I don't know if that answers any questions but there a lot of times people think that the producers pay to get their wallet out and say, here, make a movie. And that's not the way it goes. Yeah, I think that happens more in film, you know, that the producer is the one who is responsible for the executive producer for bringing the money to the table. Or sometimes people get executive producer credits because they brought money to the table. They aren't necessarily involved then in the decision processes at all beyond that. But um, yeah. But on our show too, a lot of creative decisions uh, were made by, of course, Earl, um, whether to do this or that, this should be in this story or that. But also, we were really lucky to have um, creative producers like Lee and, and sensitive people like Lee. Um, Neil was more, Neil Maffeo was more um, just, you know. Business, yeah. Yeah. The this money, he was a money cruncher. Yeah. 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 He was there to, yeah, protect the budget. <laughs> now, there is another thing in, in, Speaking of credits, um, and I worked this way several times, I would have a writer who wanted X number of dollars and for the basic, write the script, and then he'd want a bonus, you know, for when he delivered it. Oftentimes, we would exchange that bonus for a credit. Hmm. 
So, and I noticed today, I mean, you've got two zillion producers or co-producers or co-executive producers. And in uh, the case of during the 70s and 80s, um, you would, it would be a trade-off. So we'll give you a co-producer credit and we'll keep that bonus money. Yeah, I think it's still a lot of what happens. It was interesting to me because I had a chance to talk with Scott Hamner recently, and I'm hoping to have him back on because um, we had there was audio and visual issues. I'd love stuff. to see Scott. Yeah. The, um, yeah. So I couldn't use it. wasn't None of it was usable. Um, but he mentioned that Earl had taken a lesser salary to retain more creative control. Really? Yeah. Oh, that sounds yeah. like Earl. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> fortunate for us. Yeah. You know, that he did that. Um, so, yeah, he had a lot of really interesting um, information on how, you know, what went on and stuff like that. And so that was that was kind of cool to hear. Um, it, it I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't really surprise me because Earl was so hands on. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. And, you know, was, That's why the shows are so good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was you know, one of the only people that was there for the entire longevity of the show, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we had the two producers, Lee Rich, who was more involved in the in the creative side and Merv Adelson, who I think I money saw only, set money only. twice. Merv was yeah. money only. That was yeah. it. And I do think that was an agreement between uh, he and, and Lee. You know, was that fine? Write the check and I'll take care of the creative. And yet when you say that, um, that Merv was strictly money. And yet if CBS provided the, the funding, then how was Merv it was at the very beginning because Merv found his way out from the show, basically. And uh, I did have a conversation with um, Earl about that. And uh, it was their wish that uh, that original money, which had to be paid, you know, pay for the book, pay for the rights, pay, you know, take care of all of that stuff um, and take care of the expenses of selling the pilot, um, traveling to New York, et, et cetera. That was all Adelson. Yeah. yeah. So whether it was his or whether he sourced that money through his contacts, but he brought it. From what I understand, it was... Um, that it was paid back to him. I want to thank John for joining me as we chat about all sorts of aspects of the Waltons and life. I hope to see you next time. In the meanwhile, thanks for watching.